In railroad culture, talk about different accidents from across history is relatively common. In particular, rail fans pay special attention to enormous crashes and crashes that involve special interest units or locomotives that are commemorative of a past railroad, the military, the armed forces, etc. Some of the most well-known special interest instances include when Norfolk Southern 1065 struck a semi-truck, when CSX 3099 was destroyed in a major derailment in Mexico, and when CP 7011 suffered a similar fate in Maine. More minor incidents have also befallen heritage units, such as when Norfolk Southern 1073 had its horn stolen, and when Union Pacific 1995 suffered severe electric issues. But which of the modern special interest locomotives on North American rails is the unluckiest? How many accidents does it have? Well, not one, not two, not even three. This locomotive has had five separate incidents across its career. These are the incidents of the unluckiest heritage unit, Norfolk Southern 1070. Norfolk Southern 1070 was built in 2012 as part of Norfolk Southern's initial 20-unit heritage fleet, memorializing the Wabash Railroad. Yet, it wouldn't even be a year after the locomotive was commemorated that it would be involved in its first incident. On March 7, 2013, it was leading a loaded coal train unit through the community of Nashua, New Hampshire, during the progress of a winter storm. These tracks were not owned by Norfolk Southern, rather a short line that operated through Nashua. 1070 was simply operating with trackage rights, the ownership of a railroad letting another railroad run on it. As its loaded coal train snaked through the sleepy community as snowfall intensified, the back seven cars of the train would leave the rails. And it could not have happened in a worse spot, happening over one of the railroad bridges over a river. Thankfully, none of the cars would damage the bridge to the point that the bridge collapsed, and the cars themselves were quickly right. Because of this, the aftermath of the derailment was extremely easy to clear. The lines through Nashua are still open. Though I was unable to find an official report, poor weather and track conditions were likely the culprits of this incident. No injuries occurred. It would be five years until the 1070 would be involved in another accident. On May 9, 2018, it would be revealed that the 1070 suffered another derailment on a short line, this time on track through Suffolk, Virginia, while hauling an intermodal train. In this crash, a broken rail would be to blame as most of the cars behind the locomotives, almost all of them loaded, derailed. The crash, however, was also swiftly cleaned up and no injuries would occur. February 19th, 2021 saw 1070's misfortune resurface again. This time, it was trailing behind another Norfolk Southern locomotive on home rails through Canova, West Virginia. However, a semi-truck pulled out in front of the train and with no time to stop, the train struck the tractor, shoving it down the main line for hundreds of yards. The truck itself was, of course, damaged beyond repair and the locomotive in front of 1070 suffered minor damages, but 1070 itself suffered no damage. The driver of the semi jumped clear and was completely unhurt in the crash. When it was produced at the EMD shops, 1070 had a Nathan K5LLA air horn. While seemingly inconsequential to most people, the train horn is actually an extremely important warning device for the train crew, and 1070s would get stolen. There's no concrete date for when this occurred, but it occurred in late May of 2021. The train horn, of course, would need to be replaced, and Norfolk Southern would hastily attach a Nathan P5 to the top of the locomotive, one with its own issues. The 
horn's volume would gradually decrease over time and, in turn, would decrease its effectiveness. So Norfolk Southern had a remedy. Replace the horn again, this time with a much louder Nathan K1013. After this horn was installed around the new year of 2023, the controversy just suddenly stopped. 1070 has had zero incidents since its second horn got applied, and hopefully it will stay that way. But there's always a non-zero chance that it will continue to be the unluckiest heritage unit on North American rails. Thank you so much for watching this all the way to the end. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below any other topics about railroad history, motorsports history, severe weather history that you'd like me to go over in the future. With that, Silver Thunder 710, out.